departmental procedures and guidelines. It's just a suggestive way of doing it. And he goes, you got to write it so that it doesn't mention people's names. It doesn't tell you how to fix or what bolt to use. But in layman's terms, did we accomplish that to you guys so that an engineer kind of understands what you want? The vendor who's going to fix it, he kind of knows what you want. Everybody tells him, vendor, permits, vendor, you need engineer oversight. You're not going to fix these things by yourself anymore, right? Oh, oh, by, oh, you going to paint this too? Then you should have your EPA renovator's license, and you know that this thing has lead, so be, take care on how you're going to collect the chips and all these things. And no welding, right? Because it says so. I don't have to tell you not to weld, and don't let me catch you welding fire escapes. Uh, this is what tags look like. You know, imagine a fireman running into an alleyway, and he sees a white. What's he doing? Getting on it. Getting on it. All the information, who did it, who inspected it, who repaired it, everything is on that tag. To avoid what? To avoid this that happened in Marlboro Street. That's the dinosaurs of fire escapes. Ready? You guys ready for a new system? Well, if you live in a high-rise building, you probably at least Designed wonder how you would get out of there of if there was a fire. This is two to four the stairs thousand became all too real for thousands of Americans on September 11th. Many were trapped in the World Trade Center towers uh, as the floors escape. below them burned. Well, now inventors are working on new technology to help people get out alive. Ariadzer has a look at one invention. Go ahead, step up. And down he goes. Looks simple, and it is the Recover All high-rise evacuation system being tested on this day by firefighters. I think this is impressive. It's, it's, it looks pretty easy to set up. It's easy to use. It's hand-free operation. Brad, it's you talking to your child in there? Uh, I think it'll work. Second Our equipment was designed stories. specifically to be used by we senior citizens by children. The that's why we in. chose a device that is fully automatic and, we'll and operational. That they, they that's why we closed the victim inside a full coverage suit, exactly. which eliminates the pair of heights. The first step for evacuation is putting on the big suit. Kind of makes you look like a baked potato, but this actually protects you from heat and flames if you're in a real fire situation. The firefighters let us go for a test ride. Picture one of these machines on your condo balcony ready to use, or in your high-rise office, stored away for an emergency. It firefighters are now carrying these and bringing them to buildings and getting people out of buildings if they can't come back down Once anymore. you push back and let go, the machine down lowers you gently to the ground at the rate of three feet yeah. per second. It's not a the ride is smooth all the times. way down. You never speed up, you never slow down. It keeps you at that same rate all the way down to the ground. So the obvious question on everyone's mind is, with this system, Some fire any are trying to carry this so they can go to high rises and get people off the building. Remember that Cambridge situation? Where the third floor couldn't there. let anybody, 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 everybody went to the this roof? This cable, they said, was this is how they would evacuate. To this is two to four million dollars for this one. This happened by a guy that right after 9-11 in Israel, this is an actual building. He invented this system using, of all things, cruise boat technology and lifeboat technology. This is mounted on your roof, costs you two to four million dollars. We highly recommend that this gets done on any new construction in Boston. Any high rises they get, it's just an additional two to four million dollars, but in case you lose all your stairs and elevators, this is operated only by the fire department. And basically, it's a collapsible elevator system. Fire department totally controls it, and as you can see, this is how they get firemen into the building. At the same time, they get everybody out of the building. If all means of egress have been exhausted, means the stairs are blocked, you know, everything, the elevators are not working, and they have to get people out off the building. So this is not your primary means out. This is when all hell's broken loose. The fire department controls this. This would add two to four million dollars for the cost of the building. They have this is a 22 story building in Israel. There's not one in America yet. Why? And it's approved. It's gone through all the approval process. The bag and the system has gone through all the approval. Now they're showing you when even when buildings are not the right size height, you can ramp them in, but usually it's right floor to floor. They can take uh, 15 plus people per, per elevator system, so they can evacuate on average, you know, 30 to 100 people to be evacuated out every time they go up and down, at the same time driving firemen into the floors. Again, you've exhausted everything. You've exhausted elevators, staircases. All hell's broken loose. That, that Cambridge fire down by the river where the third floor wasn't letting anybody come down. You know, that elevator, I mean, the electrical fire situation. 
And everybody was on the 17th floor, this would have gotten everybody off the 17th floor. This is the new technology that's out there. This is not a second means of egress, this is a third means of egress. It's online if you want to go take a look at it. Just look on the high-rise escape systems and those two bags that I just showed you. Two to four million dollars. We talked about the code, right? All the codes say the same thing? So are you ever going to step on, on fire code by, say, by ordering a load test? Is fire code ever going to step on your toes by ordering a load test? Is NFPA ever going to step on your toes by ordering a load test? They all say start with a load test or other satisfactory means. So the code is already there. We're not rewriting code. We're just interpreting it better. And who oversees that? Structural engineers. <coughs> Here's another one that you're going to like, guys. Ready? This is from the Department of Education, but this is in every code. When you have fire drills, which is two, uh, two a month, right? One announced, one unannounced. Everybody has to use the fire escape during the evacuation. So if you got a school with a fire escape, guess what they're supposed to be using? The closest means of egress. And if it's a fire escape, children and firefighters are supposed to be using the fire escape. And they don't. Charter schools, they use old schools or they use uh, buildings that are old office buildings. And a lot of times they use these office buildings, do they have adequate fire escapes for a school? They usually have fire escapes with ladders. Is that adequate for a school? So a lot of times your charter schools need to upgrade their fire escape systems. You guys know your law. What's the dirty word out of your mouth every time you write a violation? All right, here's a quick one, ready? All exterior steel or wooden stairs. Have I mentioned fire escapes yet? So is this an exterior steel or wooden stair? Yes. Yes. And they say balconies too, right? We haven't, forget about fire escapes. This is an exterior steel wooden stair balcony. Yes. Must be low tested on the 101. Porches. Exterior steel wooden stair. Must be inspected on the uh, 101. Yeah. Low tested. Engineer oversight. Yeah. This is an exterior steel wooden stair. 101. 101. Exterior steel wooden stair. Is this an exterior steel wooden stair? Is this an exterior steel wooden stair including spirals? Exterior steel wooden stair that's off a deck? <laughs> How about ramps, handicap ramps? Are those exterior steel wooden stairs or, or bridges? Must be inspected on the 101. Care for the dogs, dogs die too on fire escapes, so be careful. How about machinery and, and, and uh, tanks and stuff that have fire escapes in back and, and, and stuff? They need to be inspected? <coughs> <coughs> this is the end of the class, guys. How about, uh, this is in uh, uh, Bentley College. We inspected the bridge. Is this a bridge that's not owned by the state? Who inspects it in your city? This is up in uh, Chelsea Hills, the, the Chelsea Homes. Is that it needs to be inspected? So if you have any walkways and bridges, they need to be inspected on a 101. All exterior steel wooden stairs, bridges need to be inspected. Got a little boat bridge, a little little brook bridge. Those need to be inspected. Ladders. <laughs> Spirals, they need to be inspected, guys. Spire, uh, anybody got a, a hidden slide scape anywhere? No? Just another test? You have to jump in there either head first or ass first. And they don't give you a potato sack. And it's dark, man. Twelve stories of darkness. And the door was jammed. They had to send a, they had to send a fireman down there with a flashlight to kick the door open. Because it was, it was frozen shut for so many years. Some of you that were in the military know that the military had a lot of these slidescapes. But here's some old slidescapes from schools. Jimmy, phone call, Jimmy. You know what recess looked at, like at this school, don't you? <laughs> and guys, a lot of people have these bag ladders. They're not an acceptable means of egress. They are a third means of egress. Fire escapes is the answer for every. Let's be very clear. The code says no new fire escape. Is that correct?
on new construction. What about existing construction? Can I put a fire escape on it? Yep. You bet. Oh, somebody said no? Yeah. <laughs> so remember that. It, there's always been a confusion. No new construction. You can't dig a hole in the ground, put up a brand new building, and put a fire escape on it. No. But all existing structures, once you've exhausted every means of getting a staircase inside that thing, a fire escape is going to be your answer. You will put it on, they will fight you, they will win. You have the right to put a fire escape once you've exhausted all other means of getting an egress. So sometimes you have a beautiful mansion with a central staircase feeding four apartments. Guess what you're going to have on, on either side? Fire escapes. Are they 24 inches wide, 8 and 8, rise and run all the way to the ground, or are they 7-Eleven? Going out a window or going out a door? Who answers all those questions? You do. But you do that with your engineer and your architect. We're going to draw a brand new plan anyway because it's a brand new fire escape. And uh, is spirals acceptable? No. But if, once you've exhausted all your means and you have this little nook in the corner, which we did over there at the YMCA in Cambridge, guess what the answer was? A spiral. So spirals are not acceptable unless you've exhausted every means. And mathematically, there's no room for anything other than a spiral or a ladder. Can you use a ladder today? No, unless you've exhausted every means, you've, you've even exhausted spirals, they'll let you put it. On a case-by-case -case basis, they'll let you put in a ladder. Oh. And guys, and what are we trying to hit? This. This is for firemen, this is not for you guys, and now we'll take the applause now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to eat, and at the end, while you guys, anybody have questions for me, I'll gladly show you my, uh, my, my little fire escape here, which we we're kind of proud of. And thank you very much for the class. Just thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we so appreciate you coming here and giving us that demonstration. This is for Katie uh, Hanna. Katie Hanna. Yeah, Katie. Katie. Left side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let you guys get back to the microphone. Katie, she looks right at me. She's lovely. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Would you like this? Yes. <laughs> Alright, who gave me the most money again for that ticket? Because I Alright, the number. Alright, the number is 497 228 228 is the last number, guys. 228. 497. 228. All expense paid trip to Hawaii. What? No, that's not the, that's the next one. Is that one? Did you bring? Thank you, guys. If anybody has any questions before the food is served, anything related to the fire sheets, I'll be here. Frank, you want to reach out? Um, 497 148. Hey, Gary, you want to come down and have somebody just record some of the uh, questions? What the, uh, one of the uh, iron workers in the area? Anybody have 148? Uh, so, the I think the train. This is a blue ticket. Um, 1248129. Um, Say that again. Blue ticket. You want a blue ticket? One, two, four, eight, one, two, nine. Yet financially, the owner has a solution for the problem. So the engineer is saying, the owner has a solution for the problem. Let the instructions be realistic. Roger, that's it. That's it. I'd like to welcome the uh, Craig Keller and past president. I think Jerry Brown came in here. Did I see her? As well as Jerry Brown, the past president. I'm going to the I have another application for a for associate for Scott. Oh my god. Excuse me. Excuse me.
Scott Furtado is a contractor renovator, uh, sole proprietor owner of Ironwood Construction in Melrose. Uh, he's been sponsored by Paul E. Johnson. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept this on it? Is okay, and second? second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Congratulations. And hey, there he is over there. Scott. You and Carl. Thank you, Scott. Oh, wow. That's great. Chelsea. There's a contrast for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing in Chelsea? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen you in 30 years. Right? I was 12, 26 at least. Now you worked in the production office, right? Yeah. It's weird because 